Hello everyone, Ruby Ravel here, sleep deprived, unwashed, overworked, and yet still somehow going like the indomitable personification of the planet Venus that I am aspiring to be dogged by cumbersome Saturn with all his duties and responsibilities that he's laying heavily on me. He's saying, you may wish to be beautiful, Ruby. You may wish to be tantalizing and an erotic stimulant to those too foolish to know better. However, we have work for you. So I'm doing this second barter on Venus conjunct Saturn because yesterday I feel I focused mostly on the external ramifications of that transit. And now I wanted to focus on the internal one. Because while Venus is about our relationships with other people, ultimately she's always about our relationship with ourselves, how we feel about ourselves, the degree of self-worth or self-love that we have. And if we have a healthily developed Venus, then we have a sense of self-worth, we have a self sense of self-love. However, if we have been too henpecked by Saturn, as some people might feel during this transit, then we can begin to doubt whether we truly are worthy of being loved. And I can say, thankfully, that, you know, any human being is worthy to be loved and should be loved, and there would be a lot less uh, dissonance and conflict and unhappiness in the world if that was something everyone truly felt. However, when we're talking about Saturn, we usually experience Saturn as an external force, as well as being the voice of our inner conscience. Often that very critical voice that will put us down or remind us when we're doing the wrong thing. And that's not always a bad voice to have. You know, we, we all need a conscience. We all need that inner counsellor that can scold us and give us a bit of a telling off if we're being too indulgent or too selfish or not doing things the right way. However, during Saturn transit, sometimes that inner policeman can become too strong, can become oppressive, can be this force that is always pushing us down and repressing any part of us that we actually love or enjoy being. Now, I don't think we are born with that inner critical voice, that voice of both reason and judgment that can sometimes be a useful, benevolent tutor and which at other times can be a repressive tyrant that seems hell-bent on killing and stifling anything that is pleasant and authentic to us. It is a voice that we derive from the authority figures that we encounter as we are growing up. It is the voice we encounter of the status quo, the collective opinion that we become more and more exposed to as we grow up. Because in general, if, if we haven't had a terribly traumatic upbringing from the get-go, usually our in Venus is encouraged and coddled in some way. When children are growing up, they are encouraged to discover what they like and what they don't like, to express their creativity freely without the expectation that every scribbled crayon drawing should end up being a Picasso or a Rembrandt. It, it is this process of self-discovery, of finding pleasure in exploring all the possibilities of yourself. Because when we first come into being, we are just this, this tiny seed of infinite potential that has yet to reify itself. Whereas we need Saturn to take that infinite possibility and constrain it into being something finite. Because we can't do everything, eventually we have to prune those branches and just focus on the things that we actually can do. But when we are growing up, we are reliant upon our elders and upon our teachers to provide those limits and to offer the voice of wisdom and experience that we have not yet developed. You know, growing up just feeling that infinite potential, we don't know where the barriers end for us. And we're not also not really conscious of mortality or the grave consequences that can come from making a mistake. We, we need our parents and our teachers to teach us those. You know, I'm sure any of you have babysat a child or parented a child have had the experience of a toddler trying to 
pull themselves into a road in front of a car and then being very angry with you when you've actually just saved their life. You know, we are that that safety net, that that barrier that, that has to be offered. And eventually as we grow up and become uh we become adults ourselves, those teachers and those rule makers we encountered growing up become internalized. And the relationship we have with that internal rule maker very much depends on the relationship we had with our teachers and elders as we were growing up, whether we experience those people as being tough but positive forces that were helping to shape us and become more of ourselves, or with arbitrary tyrants who we felt were constantly holding us back from who we innately felt ourselves to be. Because there is a great innate quality to Venus. You know, just as you can't choose your sexuality, or in my case, your, your gender expression, um, you also can't choose a lot of the things that you innately enjoy, you know? You grow up and you hear maybe heavy metal music and for some reason it just strikes this chord and you've never heard it before and yet it feels like this delicious, exquisite homecoming and you just want to disappear forever and those endless cascading virtuosic guitar solos or for someone else that might be ballet or painting or, or anime, you know, it has to strike a chord with some hidden aspect of ourself or with some nascent aspect of ourself that is yet to develop but which that art form seems to lure and tempt and tantalize out of us. And gradually over time as we explore more of the world and we get to know ourselves better we develop our Venus more, we find out more and more what makes us feel good and what makes us feel bad and naturally we will try and construct a life in which we are exposed more to the former and which we are able to reduce our exposure to the latter. And if we have pos positive Saturnine figures in our life as we grow up, perhaps those elder people see those native inclinations or proclivities we have and they find a way of fostering them. You know, they might see a child who is very terpsichorean and rhythmic and very responsive to music and say, this child is potentially a dancer, let's encourage it to go to a dance class. Or this one could be a great composer, you know, let's give it music lessons. Um, you know, it's all about seeing those seeds of potential and finding ways of developing them. However, if we've had a negative um experience of that Saturnine status quo, we might have found that there was something we learned early on that we loved that felt right to us. And rather than it being encouraged by those around us, instead it was stifled. We were taught that this thing that we loved in some way was improper, shameful, and not a respectable thing to indulge or explore. This can end up being a traumatic experience if it is too extreme. You know, it's good to have our values tested and perhaps put in opposition and a state of fertile antagonism with someone else's values and beliefs and, and likes and dislikes. But if our sole experience growing up is feeling that not just one, but society as a whole collectively seem to be antagonistic to everything that we innately love and wish we could develop more, then that sense of, of shame, that sense that there is something innately wrong with us for liking things that are discordant to the status quo, can, can be deeply internalized. People can have lasting shame for not feeling like they want the things that they should want. You know, we're all told that there's some magical shared collective value that we should all possess. We should all want to get married, we should all want to have kids, we should all want to have an, a nice home with, with two cars and a comfy job and nothing more. And if your values do not align with this, then perhaps you are mentally ill. What this harsher side of Venus conjunct Saturn can end up teaching us then is the conditionality of love someone with a well-aspected or healthy Venus might 
innately feel that they are very lovable, that they are very attractive, and that partners who will reinforce that belief will come that way. And that's very often true. If, if we have a good solid belief about something, usually we will manifest experiences that will respond to that belief, that will respond to that narrative we have within. However, if we have grown up surrounded by people who just made us feel judged, unworthy, unwanted, unloved or condemned in some way for our own native authenticity, it's very hard not to carry that on later into life. There may be nothing wrong with us, but because of the environment and the milieu in which we grew up, we, we carry that environment with it in us as, as that inner Saturn. And rather than just feeling like we are worthy of love, instead we are so conscious of our own limitations, of all the things we have yet to become, of all the virtues and attributes we feel we should possess to be a normal functioning person, but lack, it, it ends up holding us back and we end up obsessing about the ways in which we need to grow and develop if we are actually to be loved. You know, maybe we say to ourselves, I will never be loved unless I lose weight or, you know, if I'm a man, maybe I'll never be loved unless I'm more muscular and tough and go to the gym or no one will ever love me unless I am wealthy. That there can be all these rules and limits that we place on ourselves based on our past experiences that say that love is not something freely given. You are not loved for who you are, but for what you become. You are loved for being not a single person, but for being an embodiment of what the status quo tells you for, to be. You are loved and rewarded for being a functioning member of society. And uh, <laughs> I talk about this because this is a difficulty I have encountered often in my life. Even though I have a very nice dream between Venus in my moon and two fire signs, Leo and Sagittarius, giving me this wonderfully flamboyant theatrical vibe that you see here. I also have a very awkward quincunx to Saturn in Capricorn. And even though I've had that kind of natal leonine confidence and pride in, in the things that I've loved and some of that Sagittarian rebelliousness, which has enabled me to stick to the things that I love, even in the face of opposition, that quincunx with, with Saturn to my Venus has always ended up being more powerful <laughs> than I anticipated. Um, because growing up, I was generally pretty sensitive and well-behaved until I reached puberty. And that was when I found I had enough agency in the world to actually start expressing myself. And that was when I was first able to grow my hair long, where I discovered the, the progressive rock music that I like so much, where I was able to develop a sense of style and gradually found that I innately veered more towards the feminine end of the spectrum. And all of these things that innately felt so good to me and which made me feel so good about myself ended up being met with great disapprobation by everyone around me. I, I was bullied by almost everyone at school and made to feel that these things I loved were in some way wrong, socially impermissible. And even though I fought against that and still defiantly tried to be this, this colourful flamboyant figure in spite of the judgment I got, even with the proudest of people, it can be very hard still not to internalise that feeling that you are not worthy of love unless you can tick these certain boxes. And I have found I have spent much of my life shape-shifting and taking on different roles and appearances and avatars and guises, all in this kind of desperate attempt to be more of whatever I felt I lacked in the hope that someone would love me for it. You know, I also have Saturn expecting Mercury. And so for a lot of my life, I thought, well, maybe if I'm more intelligent, maybe if I'm more eloquent, maybe if I'm more poetic, then, then, or have a nice sounding voice, maybe then people will love me. Or when I was going through a phase of repressing my femininity and trying to conform to being some kind of man, I went to the gym all the time and tried to be more muscular and, and buff 
and to have a, a ripped physique in the hope that, you know, maybe that would tick the box and then I would get loved. And when we go down that road, it's, it's, it's an endless thing. Because we are finite, there will always be something that we lack. There will always be something that will fail to please those around us. And, you know, the more positive aspect of, of Venus conjunct Saturn is learning how to protect and reinforce your own values, of being able to stand alone with what you love instead of needing that external validation. So yeah, that this this transit can definitely bring to the fore a lot of a lot of self-doubt, a lot of doubt about about the worth we have, about our lovability and it can make us work on ourselves and, and really work on our true deficits, but I think it's a good aspect for looking at that inner voice and understanding where some of the nasty things it says to us or some of the internalized unproductive beliefs it has comes from. Because many of the time when we are criticizing ourselves, when we are putting ourselves down, when we have those intrusive thoughts, they're not things we truly believe, they're things we've been taught to believe. You know, some of the things it says are things that our mother or father have said to us, or which some teacher said to us, or an elder brother. Things that we've carried around and repeated so much over time that they have become this authoritative tabernacle within us that says, thou art this and nothing more, and you will, be never, you will never be loved unless you become this. So... If Saturn represents that big, heavy boulder, then it's that big obstacle sitting in the path of love. You know, we're here loving on one side and there's something on the other side that we want to give our love to and there's this big, horrible boulder in the way that we have to somehow find a way of navigating if we want that warmth and connection. But for now, we only have ourselves, and within that, we have to find some kind of solace. Anyway, I've been very sleep deprived and tired and definitely should not have made this video today. I should have done another day when I had enough clarity and actual stamina to, to pull my thoughts together in a more clarified way. However, you do what you do. Saturn made me want to slog along anyway. I hope you enjoyed this. Please leave any comments in the comment section. If you, if you want to say anything, please like, share and subscribe. And hopefully the next time I do a video, I will be better rested. And I actually have had a shower as well. So much love.